record numbers of Americans are getting vaccinated against the coronavirus. The U.S., the most vaccinated large nation in the world. Dozens of countries are now working to vaccinate their populations in an effort to end the global pandemic. President Biden says that by the end of his first 100 days, the United States is aiming to have administered 200 million doses. And by May 2021, every American adult who wants one will be eligible to get in line for a shot. That said, 30% of U.S. adults still don't want to get the COVID vaccine, but they may not have much of a choice. The federal government can, can require vaccination and things like that for coming in and out of the country. Both the state and city can have vaccine laws based on um, their legislative authority. Requiring a vaccine is a health and safety work rule, and employers can do that. Bonnie Jacobson knows this all too well. The Brooklyn resident was recently let go from her job after refusing to get inoculated. I was sitting at home and I all of a sudden just opened an email. I'm sitting on my couch and it said, basically, while we respect your decision at this time, your employment has been terminated. So can you actually be forced to take the COVID vaccine against your will in the United States? To be clear, the White House's chief medical advisor has already said that he doesn't think the federal government will ever make the COVID vaccine mandatory. However, powers at the city and state level, not to mention the legal rights granted to employers under U.S. labor law, may make it pretty difficult for some Americans to evade inoculation against the coronavirus. This isn't as unprecedented as you might think. There are a lot of required inoculations which are easy to take for granted. Just take the chicken pox. All 50 states and the District of Columbia have laws requiring children entering childcare or public schools to have some sort of provable protection against the disease, whether that's a vaccine or evidence of immunity. In fact, schools from preschool through university typically require a battery of inoculations before you can step foot on campus. When I was the health commissioner in Washington, D.C., we had uh, passed laws that required anyone who went to a um, school to um, be vaccinated against certain you know, preventable diseases. There are religious, medical, and philosophical exemptions that vary state by state. But for around 170 years, America's schools have done a pretty thorough job controlling vaccine-preventable disease in the U.S. The very first school vaccination mandate was in Massachusetts back in the 1850s. It was to protect against smallpox transmission. By the start of the 20th century, almost half of all states required students to be vaccinated before matriculating. In the early 1970s, schools with a measles vaccine mandate had incidence rates that were up to 51% lower than states without the laws. And from there, school vaccine mandates expanded over the next few decades. But while schools have been requiring vaccines since the mid-19th century, states didn't explicitly have that same power to roll out universal inoculation rules for all residents for another 50 years. In 1905, the Supreme Court case of Jacobson versus Massachusetts set the legal precedent, which now allows states to require vaccines. The Supreme Court said, yes, you can limit individual rights to protect the public health. And one way you can do it in that case is require vaccination. We've seen states exercise this authority to varying degrees in the years since. Take, for example, the 2019 measles outbreak in New York. New York imposed the mandate. It's imposed an MMR mandate, but it limited it to the neighborhoods where the measles cases were high, and it was accompanied by a $1,000 fine for those who did not have MMR. Legal experts say that narrowing the vaccine mandate to particular zip codes made it easier to justify in court rather than a statewide mandate. But critics warn that these types of targeted requirements may lead to discriminatory practices. In general, these things are done at the state level, but big cities, for example, also have vaccine laws. When I was the city health commissioner in Washington, D.C., although that certainly functions as a state, uh, we also had vaccine laws in, the, in Washington, D.C. So far, no cities or states have made the COVID vaccine mandatory, though some places have started the conversation. In November 2020, the New York State Bar Association recommended making the shot mandatory for all residents except those with a medical exemption. And then, of course, there's the biggest rulemaker of them all, the federal government, which in this case actually has pretty limited powers expressly spelled out in the Constitution. There isn't 
in the Constitution the power to protect the public health. Well, the federal government doesn't mandate vaccines. Um, what they do is they make recommendations. There are, however, softer powers at the federal level that have been used before to incentivize mass inoculation. The federal government has acted in the public health in the past using other parts, such as its commerce parts. So it could, for example, mandate vaccines before you travel in the interstate channels or before you engage in interstate commerce. If you're a truck driver that drives across state, maybe the federal government can mandate that you'll be vaccinated. The power of the purse is another key tool in Washington's arsenal. It can pass a law saying states will give you $3 million if you mandate the vaccine, but that's up to a limit. It can't do it to the degree that's coercive. The federal government could also, theoretically, impose it as a condition of getting a passport. So states and cities can require vaccines, and the federal government has a lot of influence as well. But the big question is whether the government will actually go through with rolling out a universal mandate. The first challenge is we won't have enough vaccine doses for people who want them. You can't require vaccines that's not available, that people can't get. Another major factor to consider, none of the three COVID vaccines in circulation here in the U.S. are fully licensed by the FDA. Instead, they are all cleared under something known as an emergency use authorization or an EUA. Until they are officially approved, mandates seem to be off the table. And then there's the even bigger question of enforcement. Mandates to some degree depend on pretty widespread compliance. You can't enforce a mandate if 40 percent of your population is fighting back. If the problem is widespread mistrust, mandate won't fix it. You need communication, you need education, you need to earn the people's trust by, sh by transparently showing them that the vaccine is safe and effective, by explaining to them the process of approving it and so forth. And keep in mind, if any city or state did implement a mandate, the kinds of repercussions we're talking about are relatively tame. No one is floating the idea of jail time or coming to your house and holding you down while they administer a shot. Refusal would probably just mean a fine or maybe some sort of other tax or penalty. Experts say it may also mean you are barred from entry to concerts or can't book a seat on certain airlines. In Israel, for example, they use the green passport to allow access to businesses like hotels and restaurants to those who have been vaccinated against the virus or have already had COVID-19. Implementation, though, might be tough here in the U.S. So how will this actually play? out. Experts tell me the most likely scenario is a repeat of what we've seen in the past. Once the COVID vaccines are fully approved by the FDA, a vaccine may eventually be a requirement for school-aged children in both public and private institutions, starting at daycare and extending to universities. Let's say the city where you live decides against requiring the COVID vaccine. Does that mean you're free from mandatory COVID inoculation? Not necessarily. Your employer may not be willing to take no for an answer. Jacobson was a waitress in Brooklyn and served patrons all through the pandemic. She told NBC New York that while she isn't an anti-vaxxer, she did have concerns about getting the shot because she's trying to get pregnant. My general manager has told me multiple times it wasn't going to be mandatory. When her former employer, Red Hook Tavern, asked if she planned to get the vaccine now that it's available for restaurant workers, she shared those worries. Over the last couple months, I had just heard a few things about how it can affect fertility and pregnancy, and I just wanted to uh, have a better understanding of that and do a little more research. I said that once I had more information, I would definitely be willing to change my mind on getting the vaccine. I expressed that, you know, I understand why they're important. Um, I think that the vaccine's a good thing. I'm not against them. Within a few days, she received an email from her employer saying that they respected her decision, but they would be terminating her employment because of their new policy to maintain a safe working environment. You know, I've made it clear to my lawyer that I want to go in whatever direction I think will help the most amount of people have this same situation not happen to them. CNBC reached out to Red Hook Tavern for comment, and we didn't hear back as of the date of publication. Jacobson's firing appears to be totally legal here in the U.S. I spoke with lawyers across the country, and they all say that their clients are reaching out to them in record numbers to ask what they should do about the vaccine. Clients of mine that are most interested in making a mandatory vaccine a condition of employment are brick and mortar operations that have a lot of foot traffic from their customers. They view it as a selling point. Look, you can come into our business location and it's safe because all employees have been vaccinated. That's particularly important for restaurants, bars, gyms, and salons. And so my clients in that segment of service industry 
are particularly looking hard at making it mandatory as a sales point to their customers. While this is in part a PR tactic, it's also totally within an employer's rights to roll out this kind of requirement. Legal experts say private businesses have pretty extensive rights. Requiring a vaccine is a health and safety work rule. Employers, like some hospitals, already require employees to get the annual influenza vaccine. So there's precedent that under the law, an employer can force an employee to get vaccinated, and if they don't, fire them. There are a few ways that employees could apply to be exempt from a blanket requirement. If a workforce is unionized, the collective bargaining agreement may require negotiating with the union before mandating a vaccine. Anti-discrimination laws also provide some protections. Now, other employers think that incentives are the better route to widespread inoculation in the workplace. That could mean that if you get the vaccine, you don't have to wear the same level of PPE in the office or have your temperature taken every day. There's also talk of offering financial perks. Many of my clients who are struggling with this issue have said, well, while we think it's a good idea to make it mandatory, we are going to make it voluntary, but we're gonna to try to offer economic incentives, bonuses, uh, as well as paying for the vaccination and offering optionally if the family wants to have the vaccination to pay for that too. Also, because an EUA is not a license, there is a legal question as to whether you can mandate an emergency authorization. Well, they're not a fully licensed product. So the ability to to require your employees to be vaccinated will be highly controversial. In fact, I would argue that um, an employer cannot require you to be vaccinated um, with anything other than a fully licensed product. Mandatory vaccination protocols, therefore, may have to wait until the FDA completes the entire approval process for the COVID vaccines. Ultimately, a big part of whether the U.S. achieves herd immunity against the coronavirus comes down to whether the population buys into the science. Pfizer and Moderna built their COVID vaccines with a new kind of technology that's never before been licensed in the U.S. mRNA vaccines are pretty revolutionary in the world of medicine but they also signify a natural progression of science. So far, it does seem that a concerted effort to educate the general public about COVID vaccine safety and efficacy is working. A 2021 Pew Research survey published in March showed that 69% of U.S. adults have either already gotten the vaccine or they intend to. Dr. Fauci says that if 75 to 80% of Americans are vaccinated, then by the end of the summer of 2021, we may be able to achieve herd immunity. If this polling bears out over the coming months, we'd certainly be trending in that direction and mandates may not even be necessary.